Okay, so we're going to do this problem. So this has a mass hanging right here. Okay, I'm going to close that. Don't need that. And it's supported by two strings. So there's a string cooling up at an angle and a completely horizontal string. And they're two separate strings. That is important. So let's go ahead and find the tension in both those springs, which I can actually check. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a, actually let me draw a, diff, look at a different problem first. So here is a spring, and a string, and a mass. Get on there. Okay, check that out. So in this case, there are two forces acting on this mass. There's the downward gravitational force pulling it down. And then there's the upward force and the tension in the string. Those two forces have to be equal because the mass is at rest. Because the momentum of the mass doesn't change, the forces have to be the same. So the downward, the, well the total force has to be zero, really is a better way to say that. But the important point here is that I can measure the tension in the string. The, the string also is at rest. Since the string is at rest, then the downward pull from the mass and the upward pull from the spring have to be equal in magnitude. Okay, so what this really means is that I can read the force on here. This says oh, right under two newtons, and that tells me the force of the string, even though it's not actually the string. Okay, um, so I can I can use that as a way to measure the tension in the string. Is that okay? That should be okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem. Um, I have here, let's draw a force diagram. A force diagram shows all the forces acting on the object. Now there's really two kinds of forces that you can have on an object. There are contact forces from things touching the object, and there's long range forces. A long range force, really the only one you're going to see is gravity. It does not have to touch. Okay. So here I'm going to draw my mass, and then I'm going to have a downward gravitational force. I'm going to have this, I'm going to call it T1, and this is T2. So the other important thing about forces and strings is that the string force can only pull in the direction of the string. Okay, so this is angled that way. The force has to be in that direction. Okay. You can't ha have a string this way and it actually pulls at an angle. That doesn't work that way. You can do it with a stick, but you can't do that with a string. Okay, so I know those are the three forces acting on it. The other important thing is this. This is the gravitational force. On the surface of the Earth, the gravitational force is mg, where g is the vector 0, negative 9.8, 0 newtons per kilogram. Okay, so I'm using this three-component notation for the gravitational force. Um, you may use gravitational, or you may use vectors in a different notation, but that's the way I'm going to use it, because okay? it's the best. Okay, so from this, I know the following. F net, this board's moving, is equal to zero. I know that the net force is equal to zero because the mass is not changing momentum. The mass is, has zero acceleration. And yes, this is the zero vector. That's zero, zero, zero. So I can just, F net is the net force. So I can add up the net forces. So here I have F net equals T1 plus T2 plus mg equals zero. And I know what you may be thinking. Wait, gravity is negative. But these are vector equations. Yes, the gravitational force is in the negative y direction, but as a vector, this is how we add them up. Okay, so be careful about that. This is true. F net means add up the vectors. And it doesn't matter if it has a negative y component, I still add it up. Okay. So this is where we could uh, use some little some tricks here. Uh, and the number one thing is, I'm actually I'm going to measure this angle. Let's do that because I can move this and have more room. So all right, let's get this angle right here, theta. Okay, and I just picked it that way because I have no idea why. Uh, so I'm going to kind of approximate that uh, angle using this protractor. Um, and I, I'm, it's going to be really rough because 
I don't really have a good way of measuring that. Uh, I'm just going to estimate it here. Uh, it's right around 30 degrees. So, let's say theta equals 30 degrees. Okay, so what I want to do is use the, and I also have this mass right here is 200 grams. 0 0.2 kilograms. So what I want to do with those things is find both those tensions, both the magnitudes of the tensions. Okay, so I'm going to move this. I might bring it back up later to show you something else, but we'll just have to see. Oh, that's better. I feel, I feel like I have more room. So, if these vectors all add up to the zero vector, then that means the x components of the vectors add up to zero and the y components add up to zero. So let's call this the x direction and this the y direction, which is completely made up, right? There is no origin, there is no x direction. You pick that. You can pick them whatever way you want. So I can write this as f net x equals zero and f net y equals zero. So now these are scalar values, right? I, now I do include the sign in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the y equation. So f net y, uh, so what force, which of these three forces act in the y directions? Well, we have mg is in the negative y direction, so I'm going to write that down, negative mg, and then I have part of t1, right? I have a component of t1. So if I draw that with red, just so it looks a little bit easier, Here's the x component of T1, T1x. Here's the y component of T1, T1y. And I can, and I know this angle, I know, well, I could use this triangle up here. Maybe I use that one. So that's T1y and that's T1x. And this is important, right? Because I picked that angle from the y axis, so, and I did it on purpose, so that we'd have to use our trig to find these things. So here's my triangle, right triangle. If I take the cosine of theta, Let's see, cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be T1y over T1 magnitude. So T1y equals T1 cosine theta. And I can do the same thing, that's a y, it's on the x. T1x is T1 sine theta. Okay. The problem here is a lot of people just automatically think Cosine is the x component, but it depends on your picture. So I'm going to put this as the y component as plus t1 cosine theta. I already, already forgot. Okay. Equals zero. That's important. Okay. I know m. I know g, which is the magnitude of g, 9.8. I know, I do not know t1, but I do know theta. I can go ahead and solve for t1. Let's do that. Okay, I think that would be better for you. This is T1x. No it's, no, it's T1. That's the magnitude of T1. So I add mg to both sides, and I get T1 cosine theta equals mg. T1 equals mg over cosine theta. I should have read the force right there. Oh, well, I'll do that in a second. And that's going to be equal to 0.2, 9.8, divided by the cosine of 30. And I'm going to use my, my calculator right here, put that in. You can't really see this, so probably not. Well, I'll do it anyway. Okay, so I have theta is 30 degrees, so 30 times pi divided by 180. Uh, M equals 0.2, G equals 9.8. T1 is equal to M times G divided by cosine theta. I get T1 is 2.26 newtons. That's the magnitude of T1. I'm going to write it, I'm going to write it as a vector in a little bit. Okay. But I already know that the y component is just mg. So let's write it up here. mg equals, let's just calculate that just for fun. one point nine six okay now I need to do the uh, x direction and I'm going to do that over here because I 
poorly planned my board spaceage, and that was my fault. Okay, but I blame the apparatus I had over here. So now if I look at the x direction, there are two forces in the x direction. There's the x component of T1 and the y component of T2. So I can get T1x, which is just going to be T1 sine theta, minus T2 equals 0. So T2 is in the negative x direction, and it has no y component. So right now I can solve for T2. T2 equals T1 sine theta. So let's just put that in here. And I get 1.13, let's see. And that's, that's the force in Newtons. Okay, um, so now I can write these two uh, tensions as vectors. So let's write that T1 is easy. It's going to be negative 1.13 Newtons, 0, 0 Newtons. Now for the x component for, for uh, T1, that's T2. T2, T1 vector is going to be equal to 1.13. That's the x component because we already calculated that. The y component is this 1.96. There you go. There's my two tensions. Now let's check. I'm going to bring my little apparatus back up here. Hopefully without knocking it over. Okay, so down here I have a 100 gram mass. So in a 100 gram mass uh, I know that the tension in this string should be constant. So that's going to give me about uh, 1 Newton. Because I have 100.1 times 9.8, it's going to be, you know, 0.98, and I have 1.13, so I'm off. But, you know, there's some friction in this, and I measure the angle poorly and stuff like that, so I'm pretty happy with that. If I look over here at this scale, I get uh, 2.7 for the tension in here, whereas I calculated 2.26. So, again, it's not exactly correct, but it's, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Okay. Let me show you something else. If you look right here, I actually have two strings. I have two strings that are connected to that mass, or two separate strings. What would happen if I just replace that with one string? I want to show you something cool happens. So I'm going to see if I can take this off without making a mess. I'm going to take off that, and I'm going to take off this, and I'm going to take that off. So now I have just one string, one string. I'm going to connect that there. I'm going to pass this through here. And I was going to use two springs, but the pulley, well, don't worry about it. Okay, and now I'm going to hang the mass here. See that? That's different. But the important thing is that this string is the same as that string. I want to stay on this side so you can see me. This string is the same as that string. And a string, a continuous string, has to have the same tension in it. So the tension on this side has to be the same tension as that side. So what that means, if you measure, you should try this and measure it. This angle has to be the same as that angle. It has to be. You can't not make that. Look, if I move it over here, it just, it just slides over there. Because the x components of forces have to cancel because those are the only two x-component forces. Okay, the end.